Hello and welcome to The Album Man. And today I'm going to be going through my top five albums of the year. And I also thought I'd do what I th what my favourite remaster slash re-releases of the year as well. Um, so let's start with the you know remaster slash re-release. So if you've seen in my previous reviews, you may have an indication. But here it is. The Dark Side of the Moon Experience Edition by Pink Floyd. So, you know, I have done a full review on this, but what makes this album so great? It's got a brilliant remastering job by James Guffrey, and disc 2, the previously unreleased live disc, it is, in my opinion, the definitive version of Dark Side of the Moon. And it's just absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know, it really just blew me away when I heard that live, you know, especially things like money, and any colour you like, time, it's just fantastic, easily deserving of this. Absolutely brilliant re-release. And we master by Pink Floyd. So, let's go on to my top five albums of the year. So, at number five, we have Motorhead's The World Is Yours. So, this album is the latest in a long line of Motorhead albums. And, I mean, it shows that Lemmy, in his mid-60s now, I think, something like that, has still got it. I mean, he's been performing since, I think it was 1973 with Hawkwind. May well be wrong there, but I know it's certainly, you know, he started really performing properly with Hawkwind. He's been making albums for, you know, an extremely long time, and he's one of the absolute legends of metal, rock, whatever you choose to call it. I mean, some songs on here, for example, I Know How To Die, Get Back In Line, and Waiting For The Snake. I mean, you know, there's so many brilliant songs on this album. Really, it's quite amazing. I think it's a classic Motorhead album, and every Motorhead fan should own it. It's, you know, absolutely brilliant. It really is just classic, classic Motorhead. I love it, you know. Phil Campbell brilliant guitar work in it, and Mickey D is a really, really great drummer. Just all round brilliant album. So we come to number four, and that is Black Country Communion 2. So this is the follow-up to the self-titled Black Country Communion, and is from, yeah, so the supergroup Black Country Communion, which is made up of Glenn Hughes, the previous vocalist for notably Deep Purple, and was also in Black Sabbath for about two and a half minutes. Then you have Joe Bonamassa, who is the brilliant solo artist. Um, you know, plays blues. Brilliant, brilliant um, guitarist. And got good vocals as well. Then you have Jason Bonham, the son of the legendary Zeppelin drummer John Bonham. And then you have Derek Sherinian, who is the previous, well, the ex Dream Theater keyboardist, and played on, certainly played on Change of Seasons, and I think he also played on Awake as well. Maybe something else, but I know, no, I'm pretty sure he just played on those, I think. Yeah. But anyway, so, you know, this album really has a sort of Zeppelin, black country feel to it, things like The Outsider, Man in the Middle, An Ordinary Son. Brilliant, brilliant songs. An Ordinary Son, as if you know the previous album, it's just like Song of Yesterday with Bonamassa singing the um, sort of verses and Hughes joining in the chorus and then brilliant solo by Bonamassa. This album certainly got a lot more of Shoinian, the keyboardist, in it than previous albums and I think he's a great keyboardist. I loved him from Dream Theater. I love him in this. Jason Bonham's drums are phenomenal, really great, and Glenn Hughes vocals are just, in my opinion, some of the best vocals in work. You know, this is a super group to be reckoned with, I absolutely adore them, and this is a brilliant, brilliant album. Absolutely love it. And at number three, we have the guitarist from my previous album, Black Country Communion 2, which is Joe Bonamassa. This is his solo album, Dust Bowl. Um, you know, it really is just absolutely classic blues. Songs such as Slow Train, 
in the last Matador Bay on Heartbreaker, which features Glenn Hughes as well. And, you know, The Well That Swallowed Jonah, along with classic... Oh, Meaning of the Blues, I could have missed that out. Along with classic covers. And, you know, it has um, John Hyatt and Vince Gill as well contribute on a couple of songs. As well as Glenn Hughes, as I've already said. It's just a brilliant blues album. It is one of Joe Bonamassa's finest. Up there, certainly, with... Um, let's see. Slow Gin, New Yesterday Live... And Blues Deluxe, you know, which I think are his classic albums. Certainly up there, possibly his best. Um, certainly better than Black Rock, which was a bit too cover focused. I mean, this album has 12 songs, six of them are covers, six of them are his own. Um, but absolutely phenomenal guitarist. Hoping to see him in February. Um, you know, a brilliant musician. I just love this album. So then next we have the comeback album from Dream Theatre, which is a dramatic turn of events. So, you know, I think it was about last, not last September, September 2010, when Mike Portnoy announced that he was leaving Dream Theatre. So this of course came as a shock to fans, as he has always been really the leader of the band, along with Petrucci, and is, in my opinion, the best drummer certainly with Neil Peart in the world and so this was a shock but Dream Theatre decided to carry on and hired Mike Mangini who has played people such as Steve Vey before and is a you know um, notable metal drummer and I think he does a really really good job in this album and I think it's absolutely brilliant I was a bit sceptical about this album wonder if they could really come back from Mike Portnoy's departure but they have absolutely and delivered a phenomenal album. You know, it's not exactly Metropolis Part 2, um, Scenes of Memory or um, Images and Words, but it's certainly a really great Dream Theater album. It's certainly a lot lighter, especially in something like Train of Thought, and it's lighter than Black Clouds and Silver Lining. Um, but it just has, it has a uniqueness to it compared to the other albums. It has its own feel. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. Things such as On the Back of Angels, which is the main single. Um, Build Me Up, Break Me Down, which has such a catchy chorus. Bridges in the Sky. This is, I could list all the songs. They're, you know, absolutely brilliant album. Adore it. But yes, it hasn't taken the number one spot. Because the number one spot has to be for Blackstone Cherries, Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. This album is just unbelievable. I love the Southern Rockers, Blackstone Cherry, and in my opinion, they are the heirs to Leonard Skinner. So singles such as White Trash Millionaire, In My Blood, just amazing. Then you have just album tracks of Like I Woe, um, Such a Shame, Killing Floor, I mean. It is just catchy, four-minute, southern walk. I mean, you know, they aren't trying to, you know, create a free bird here. But all the songs are just so consistent. They have that southern skinned flair, but Blackstone Cherry put a modern twist on it. This is, in my opinion, their best album. Easily the best album of the year. And I just... Uh, you know, it's brilliant. I saw them support Alter Bridge. They were brilliant live. They're just unbelievable. I suggest everyone goes and buys this album. So, that's my top five albums of the year and best we master slash we release. I'll be doing individual reviews for this album and I'll be putting them in the description of this video as I have done them. So, thank you for watching. Look out for full reviews of this album and reviews of many others. And this is the album man. Comment, wait, subscribe, and goodbye.